I'm Eric from Spofford Press. Today we're going to be doing a project where we are printing a photopolymer plate using an etching press, something I do quite often because I find that I can get a really deep impression and some really clean lines on it, uh, probably a lot deeper than you could with a traditional plate and press. And uh, so let's get started. So this is a photopolymer plate. I have mine made it online at boxcarpress.com. I'll leave a link in the description box for their page. Basically, you take your design, um, your graphics, text, uh, make it into a file and you send it to them and then they have it processed into this polymer plate, which can be used along with their boxcar base on traditional letterpress machines and plate and presses, but you can also use them on the etching press. Um, they come with an adhesive on the back and basically you just unstick it, put it on the press and go. So this particular plate is for a greeting card. The first thing you want to do is measure and see what size card you want to do. I use these, they are pre-cut and pre-scored A2 size cards um, that I pick up online. They're actually 100% uh, cotton cranes letter paper, so they're really beautiful cards. Uh, they just save me from having to score and trim them all. So I already have a smaller plate that's adhered to the press bed. Uh, this actually just has my logo and website information, and it's printed on the back of each of my cards. The reason it's already adhered here, and the reason these tabs are already set up is because I did a run of cards just the other day, and I kept these set up on the press to make uh, my job a little bit easier today. Um, all the cards I use are this A2 size, so basically I don't have to worry about uh, having this not be aligned at the bottom of the back of the card. Lining up this plate so that it's even on the card and on the press where you want it to print each time is actually quite simple. I take one of my dummy A2 cards and I simply put the plate down and what I want to do is measure exactly where I want it to be on the card. I then go ahead and I draw a couple of pencil lines making a grid on the card just to give me an idea of where I want to place it. I've already done that. And then basically you flip the card over do a little double-sided tape on it, and then put it right where you have it aligned and stick it down. Now that you have the plate double-sided taped to your card, exactly where you would want it to print, the next thing you do is the box art, these boxcar plates come with a blue film that you just take off of this and you reveal the adhesive on it. And then probably the most important part would be to line this up with your tabs where they're registered from before. You want to make sure that this is pretty dead perfect because you know you really only want to do it once. And then you simply drop the card, and give it a quick little rub. Now right now the plate is stuck to the press and it's also still stuck to your card with that double-sided tape. So what I like to do is um, just give it a little bit of a rub peel up the paper and there we have our plate registered exactly where we're going to want it and again I still have this small plate here to print the back of the cards with my logo and website and these should be aligned so each time we roll the ink onto this plate and that plate and then we line up one of our blank cards place it down and roll it through the press we should be getting a perfectly straight print. Now that the plate and this smaller plate are adhered to the press, we have our gauge pins ready. I kind of want to check and see if everything is really straight before I get the ink out and I start getting things uh, covered in black ink. So I'm just going to take a blank card and I'm going to just pretend it's inked. We're going to do like a blind debossment. Line this card right up with our gauge pins, then this piece of foam tape. Get it exactly where it would be when we're actually going to make the print with the black ink. I'm going to place the blankets down. I actually use a rubber blanket. This used to be from Offset, uh, offset Lithography and uh, I find that because it's rubber it actually gives you a little bit more of a debossment when you run this through the press. So he goes on first and then I just have a traditional felt because it is an etching press. Uh, I want to adjust the pressure on this. Every press is going to be different. Uh, mine, for example, when it comes to these letter press plates, I lower the roller as tight down and far as I can, and then it gets just to put, and I have a little mark on it to where just about it works perfect for me. And I'm going to roll it through and see how this goes. Uh, we pulled the card, and sure enough, it actually looks really great. Um, it is lined up 
nice and evenly. The back logo is also looking really good. And as you can see, the light sources, it does have a pretty nice impression strength on it. You can actually even see it through the back of the card. So I am very happy with this, and I think it's time to get the ink out and actually make a couple of these guys. This is a fairly simple design we're doing, so it's just going to be a one color uh, black ink card. I am going with uh, my favorite black ink of all time. This is 2202 from Graphic Chemical. It's a block printing ink for relief, but I find that it has a really nice consistency and I never really have to tighten it up or loosen it or anything. It's pretty nice right out of the tube or right out of the jar. Um, it actually is kind of a cool ink. They also carry one on their letterpress line that is warmer and that kind of works nice with like sometimes a creamier colored paper, particularly for engravings and stuff. But for the letterpress, I really, really, really like this cool black ink. Uh, so here's one of the tricks when it comes to inking, uh, especially for this kind of a thing. Uh, I have a large brayer. I am going to roll it up, just like you would for any kind of lock printing and try and get a nice even coverage on it. But what I find with this, because everything is hand inked, everything is hand fed when you're using an etching press, you, I mean, every single card could be different from card to card unless you start really getting into a pattern of doing stuff the same way. I find, as a rule of thumb with these, that less ink and more pressure makes for a crisper line and a cleaner card, So, or any kind of a letterpress print. So I do like to charge up the roller pretty well. You can hear that lovely velvety sound there. And then we're gonna go to inking. So you gotta figure out how do you ink this little plate with that gigantic roller on this press without just getting ink everywhere. And the solution that I came up with is actually very simple. I use these little things, uh, these little cardboard rails. Uh, basically when I started doing letterpress printing, I don't know, a, year, a couple years ago, I did a measurement of how high the letters are because all the plates when I have them come back from boxcar are the same height as far as where the inking surface is going to be and what I do is I just place one of these rails which is just a piece of I think it was like a card stock that I just kept layering with blue tape until I got it to the right thickness and then it got one coat of packing tape on it so you can actually wipe it very easily and for most prints and things like that I just use the two rails and the roller with the ink goes right on top of the rails, as you'll see in a moment, gets pulled back and forth and inks just the surface without getting ink anywhere on your press. Uh, for this particular one, I am also showing how we print the backs of the cards with the little Spofford Press logo. Um, a lot of the times I just do the front of the card on the etching press and my little logo gets printed um, on all of my cards I'm doing at once using a small little plate and press that's very quick to do that. But I figured I would just show the process to do everything on an etching press in case someone only has an etching press but really wants to have a professional looking card come out. So because of that, a large rail goes here and one goes on the end and then a smaller one is going to go in the middle main reason for that is because my roller is not this big it's only about eight inches so I'm gonna be able to do a roll right here to get this plate done and then I'll do a quick one right on this end to get this one done after that you're gonna see that we remove all of the rails and you have a nicely inked surface a nicely inked surface and then we put the blank card in and we print so let's go ahead and do that right now I've got my rail set roller is inked. So I'm going to start right here. The roller goes right down on the rails. And here's my other huge printing tip for this kind of a thing. Even though this is kind of meant to be a handle to be held like a handle, I hold this straight up. The handle goes straight up and with just very even pressure, I just do one, two. And then over here, we're going to do a quick one, two on the logo. Remove the rails, and your press has no ink on it, no problems whatsoever. It's just on the surface, 
And the main reason for holding that brayer straight up is because when you do ink this way, you're not actually inking the sides of the letters or the edges or going over the edges. You are just kissing the top of the type and the top of the image. So when you do pull the print at the end of it, when the paper comes up, you get a very, very clean print, very clean lines, and none of that blotchy, sideways kind of stuff that sometimes you see with like lino cuts or things that are really slapped on with ink. It works particularly well for things like the logo where I have this fine, fine print in here for the website information. If you just, if you put too much ink or if you happen to just roll some of the ink on the edges of those letters, they just come out blurry. All right, so we're ready to make this card. Uh, before I say so, you'll probably see I had some ink get on this tape from the rollers. I just quickly wiped that off with a rag. So again, everything's totally clean except the two plates. We've got our pre-scored uh, cotton white beautiful card here. And what I wanna do is put the score mark down so that it'll fold like that. And very carefully, because see, you don't want this thing dragging up against anything with ink on it. You sort of have to give it a little bit of a bend a little bit of a wiggle, get it into those gauge pens. Once you're sure that it's nice and straight, it's not off at all, just drop your paper and whatever you do, no matter what kind of relief printing you're doing, don't touch the paper, don't move it, don't breathe on it, it's a little tricky. And basically we're just gonna lay down the rubber blanket first, and the etching blanket, we're gonna roll it through the press, nice and steadily. You don't really want to stop in the middle of it being on top of the plate. You just want a nice smooth even motion. All right, lift up your blanket. And then when you go to lift up the print, just very carefully kind of pop it up without having to smudge it or anything like that. And then as you can see, we have a beautiful print. And that is basically it. You can make a really awesome, deep impression, really crisp and clean letterpress card using a simple etching press and a photopolymer plate from somewhere like Boxcar Press. I'll leave a link in the description box to Boxcar Press so you can check them out if you're interested in doing this. Um, it's a really fun thing to do and I find that it is a lot slower than some of the bigger traditional plate and presses and trendle based or automated letterpress machines that might be able to make a thousand or five thousand of this card in one hour. Um, I'm probably pulling a nice clean card every, you know, 45 seconds to maybe a minute depending on, you know, how quick things are going down here. So if you want to like, you know, make a hundred cards and try them out and see if they're any good, you know, you put a couple of hours into it. You match them up with a really awesome, cool envelope and put them in a bag and see how that goes. For a final step, now that these cards are finished, I decided that it might be a lot of fun to put a little bit of color onto the actual pigeon on the card. So I am just giving it a nice light wash with some gray watercolor. And then when that's finished, I'll go ahead and do a little bit of orange on the, the beak and on the feet. So I don't normally do a lot of hand painting when it comes to cards and things like this, but uh, I think this would be kind of a nice touch for this one and it should make it pop a little bit more. Um, if you're going to try this, uh, definitely check and test it first. Uh, the Cranes cotton paper that I use is fantastic. It actually will not bleed through to the back, so you just get a really nice uh, tint on the, on the actual image that you're doing. The coolest thing about adding watercolor over something that's letter pressed already is that you still can feel the ridges and the indentation from the letter press even though it still has this nice tinted color over it. So I can still feel all of the feathers when I rub my finger over it, but it does have a nice gray and it'll have a little orange as well. It's like a best of both worlds. So thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and let me know. If you have any questions at all about something I covered or forgot to cover, you can leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. And subscribe to the channel if you really like it. It's going to be printmaking projects, letterpress projects, uh, we do wood engravings and relief cuts and relief prints and all kinds of cool printmaking stuff. And that's, uh, that's what we're focusing on here. We are all about printmaking here at Spofford Press and having a really good time doing it. So thanks again and we'll see you next time.